Now that you've learned the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, let's go ahead and see it in action. We'll do a few um, examples uh, where we use the fundamental theorem, part two, uh, to evaluate definite integrals. So the first way we can use this fundamental theorem to help us is if we're asked to find the area under a curve on a closed interval. Uh, here we're asked to find the area under x squared on the interval 0, 1. I drew a little sketch of that. Uh, let me emphasize the word sketch. This is not a work of art, but it is a sketch of the curve uh, y equals x squared. And then I've shaded in the region underneath there that we're interested in. So here's how we use the definite integrals and the fundamental theorem. We already know that this definite integral is the way we describe that area. We put the limits of integration, which are 0 and 1. We use the integration symbol. We put our function here, and then dx tells us the variable that we're taking the uh, integral with respect to. Excuse me. Okay, so let's use this fundamental theorem. The way the fundamental theorem works is we figure out the antiderivative, any antiderivative without the plus c, because when we subtract, the c's cancel anyway. So this antiderivative is going to be one third x cubed. You may also see it as oops. You may also see it as uh, x cubed over three. You see what happens when I try and talk and write at the same time. And remember, we use this new notation. We've done the antiderivative, so we don't need the integral symbol anymore. But we do need to indicate that we're going to evaluate this between zero and one. So we use this vertical bar with our limit, limits of integration, and we stick it on the right-hand side to differentiate from the integration symbol. Okay, so we're going to plug 1 in the first time, and I get 1 third times 1 cubed. That's F, capital F of B, minus, I plug in 0 this time, and 0 cubed is 0. This is capital F of A, and all of this works out to be 1 third as a fraction. Uh, or you may see it as a decimal, 0 0.3 repeating. So we quickly use the fundamental theorem to figure out that the area underneath the curve on this interval, 0, 1, happens to be 1 third. Let's try that again with a little more complicated function. Here we have the function x squared plus 1, and I want to find the area underneath the curve on the interval negative 1 to 2. Again, I tried to draw a sketch of that over here, and we'll use our fundamental theorem to help us get the value of this area. Excuse me. My notation is the integral symbol with the limits negative 1 to 2. My function is a sum, so I'm going to include it in parentheses, x squared plus 1 multiplied by dx. Again, we're going to use our antiderivative, which we just use our power rule and our constant rule, and we do that, we get x cubed over 3, or 1 third x cubed, as I showed you in the last example. My tongue and my brain are not communicating right. Uh, the antiderivative for 1 is just x. Again, I'm going to use that new notation where we indicate our limits, our a and our b, and then we go ahead and we calculate this. When you plug a 2 in, which we have to plug in first because that's b, we're going to get 8 over 3, because 2 cubed is 8, plus 2. Minus, plug in a negative 1, I get negative 1 third over 3, or excuse me, negative 1 over 3, uh, minus 1. And then we have to go ahead and add all that up. Well, I'm going to do a little uh, associative property here. I'm going to put the 8 thirds with this plus one-third, right? This turns into a plus one-third because we distribute the negative. This turns into a plus one. And so this is eight-thirds plus one-third. That's a horrible looking three. Plus two plus one. So I get nine-thirds, which is three, plus two plus one, which is also three. And so this total value is six. area underneath the curve from negative, two, negative 1 to 2 turns out to be 6. 
in order to get practice with the fundamental theorem and evaluating integrals, we usually take away all the context and just say, look, we want to figure out what this definite integral is. So what we expect you to do is simply use that fundamental theorem part two. We're going to do the antiderivative on 3x squared with that power rule that turns out to be x cubed, right? Uh, let me erase that 3 there. Because it's x cubed over 3 times 3 and the 3's cancel. And then the... An <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to pause and laugh for a minute because I erased the 3 and wrote it again and it looks exactly the way it was the first time. Sorry about that. The antiderivative for this e to the x, remember, is pretty easy. It's just e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x and the antiderivative is e to the x. Okay, now here's where this thing gets a little weird. We're going to evaluate this from 1 to 3. And plugging in these numbers with an e to the x, you're going to be tempted to use your calculator, but we're not really expecting that. You can just leave it as the exact value. So I'm going to plug in 3, and I get 3 cubed, which is 27, plus e cubed. Don't really care what the value of e cubed is. I know it's something less than 27, but uh, we're not worried about that number right now. We're going to subtract, plugging in a 1, we get 1 cubed, which is 1, plus e to the 1, which is just e. And so what we end up with is a grand total of 27 minus 1, which is 26, plus my e cubed, and then it's going to be a minus, because we distribute this minus sign, minus e. And I really don't need you to figure out what the decimal value of that is. We're just going to leave it like that. That's as close as we can get. You can't combine these e terms because they are not like terms. This is an e cubed. This is an e. We're not going to get an answer for that until we crank it out on a calculator. But it's not necessary. Mainly we want you to practice your fundamental theorem and your big F of B minus your big F of A. When I say big F, I mean capital F. I think maybe I'm being lazy when I say big F, but... That's how I memorized it, and so it sticks in my head. Eventually, we get to the point where we don't even feel like writing any English words. We simply give you the definite integral, and the expectation is that you'll figure out the value. Okay, now, we have to be careful here. The function 1 over x does not follow the power rule. Remember, 1 over x is the derivative of the natural log. And we have an antiderivative rule that says if you're doing the antiderivative of 1 over x, you write the natural log of the absolute value of x. Now, 1 over x squared does follow the power rule. Remember, this is just x to the negative 2. So we're going to add 1 to that and divide by negative 1, meaning this turns into a plus... 1 over x, because it turns into x to the negative 1. Again, we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Let me say again how I did these integrals, these antiderivatives. 1 over x does not follow the power rule. The antiderivative is the natural log of absolute value of x. x to the negative 2 does follow the power rule. You add 1 to it, you get x to the negative 1, and you also divide by negative 1, so that turns this negative sign into a positive sign. And I just wrote x to the negative 1 as 1 over x for convenience. Now we're ready to do the fundamental theorem. I plug in a 2 and I get the natural log of the absolute value of 2, which is natural log of 2, plus 1 half. Plug in the bottom number 1, I get the natural log of the absolute value of 1, which is 1, natural log of 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, natural log of 1 should ring a bell. That's 0. So really, I just have the natural log of 2 plus 1 half minus 1. And that all simplifies to log 2, natural log of 2, minus 1 half. You do not need to simplify this any further. In fact, you can't without getting a value on your calculator. The reason we don't go to the calculator very often on these is the calculator only gives us an approximation. This is an exact value that I've written here, and usually we're happier with that. Okay, so there were th three or four quick examples. I guess it was four examples of 
using the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate definite integrals. Uh, good luck working on your problems.